welcome to today's webinar, A Second Look, Update on Visual Literacy. During today's presentation, attendees will be in listen-only mode. To ensure that you can see all of the content for the event, please maximize your event window. To also maximize your slide view, click on the Scale button located in the upper right area of the window above the slides so that it shows at 100%. If during the program you would like to submit a question, please use the chat pod located in the lower left hand corner of your screen, type your question into the text, text box at the bottom, and click send. If you have any technical difficulties, you may contact our help desk at 877-297-2901. And now, I'll turn things over to our presenter, Joy Inouye. Joy, welcome to the program. Thank you, Diana, for the introduction. And welcome everyone to today's webinar. We are going to be talking about the ongoing research project that the Campbell Institute has been doing on visual literacy. Um, so like Diana said, my name is Joy Inoue. I am the research associate for the Campbell Institute, which means that I work on a lot of different research projects with our Campbell Institute members and partners. Uh, this is a project that we took on about, oh, at this point about uh, three years ago um, in collaboration with um, several of our Campbell Institute member companies. And uh, we put out um, a couple falls ago a um, uh, the, our initial paper on visual literacy, and this one is actually the second one. So we're looking at some research results, um, which we are going to see at the end, kind of towards the end of the webinar. Um, but to begin with, I just wanted to give you some background information on the Campbell Institute, also the National Safety Council, and also fill you in, in, in case you missed the first uh, webinars on this, on some of the background of visual literacy and why we were pursuing this project. Uh, so like I said, the National Safety Council, um, we are a nonprofit over 100 years old um, in the business of workplace safety. Um, so this is what you see on the screen here is our newest mission as the council, and we have this what we call a moonshot goal to eliminate preventable deaths in our lifetime. And we want to do this through uh, our various initiatives and our priorities, you can see here, they cut across all areas of everyday life. So this is where we focus our efforts. This is where the most preventable uh, deaths and injuries occur uh, at work, in the home, and in the community, and also on our roadways. And as part of the Campbell Institute, um, you know, most of my work is situated within the workplace. Um, and the injuries and deaths that occur there. Um, so that is the focus of um, the, this research on visual literacy. It's also the focus of today's webinar. A little bit about the Campbell Institute as well. So just like the National Safety Council, which is a member membership organization, the Campbell Institute also has member organizations. And we're numbering at, I think, close to 40 right now. Our vision for the Campbell Institute is to become the trusted source for protecting people and preserving the planet. Our mission is to help organizations achieve and also sustain environmental health and safety excellence. And the reason we do this is because we believe that protecting people and preserving the planet are just those integral pieces to business excellence. And on this next slide, I have what is our most uh, recent honeycomb of our members and partner organizations. So in the past year, um, we were happy to announce our newest members, uh, Comores Company, Day and Zimmerman, Granger, Krauss Bell Group, Parsons Corporation, U.S. Steel, and also Wabtech. So we are very pleased to welcome those newest members to the Campbell Institute family. 
And uh, during this webinar, we'll be talking about the participation of some of these member companies um, in the visual literacy study. So without further ado, let us get started here. So the research on visual literacy actually began through uh, our uh, relationship with one of our member companies, which is Owens Corning, which is based out of Toledo, Ohio. And they had been doing actually some trainings and exercises through the Toledo Museum of Art. And you might be wondering, what does an art museum have to do with workplace safety? Well, the TMA was running a workshop on visual literacy and had actually been working with several other um, industries and businesses in the Toledo area. Uh, some of them involved um, healthcare industry, for instance. And it was about learning to see better, um, training your eyes uh, to become more visually aware. And they were realizing that this had implications uh, to provide uh, not only better care within uh, the healthcare industry, but also to equip uh, workers in all sorts of environments um, to be safer on the job. And uh, so that is how Owens Corning became involved with the Toledo Museum of Art, and also subsequently how the Campbell Institute uh, became involved in this partnership. Now, uh, since um, that time, since that initial uh, trainings on visual literacy have been offered uh, through the Toledo Museum of Art, they've spun off a new entity, and you can see their logo below, the Center of Visual Expertise, and, uh, or COVE, as we call them. Now, COVE offers um, now these uh, workshops and trainings in visual literacy um, at the Toledo Museum of Art. And uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about them um, later in the webinar. Uh, but this is initially how uh, the research got started. And these are our um, members and partners that are involved with us in collaboration on this project. Now, the, uh, we start um, kind of looking at um, you know, why, are, why are we turning towards the art world uh, to talk about workplace safety. And the idea behind visual literacy is that um, we're not really taking in all that we possibly can when we're looking at an object. So just think about when you are in a museum and you're looking at a certain piece of art, uh, most of us, the vast majority of us, will not spend more than just a few seconds looking at a piece of art before kind of shuffling on to uh, look at something else. Um, and that is, um, the reason for that is that we tend to fill in those pieces of uh, what we see based upon our own experiences. Um, we don't really, we're not really looking at the details of a painting or a piece of art per se just because we think, oh, well, I've seen a painting before. I know what a painting looks like. And even though you may not have seen this uh, particular painting before, your mind kind of just fills in details and you're not really perceiving all that you can. So the idea behind visual literacy is to uh, give us some steps and some tools to better see things, experience things visually, um, and to take in those details that we may be missing. What is visual literacy? Uh, visual literacy, uh, as it's taught through COVE, is being able to read, uh, comprehend, and write visual language. In other words, being visual, visually literate is being able to read uh, pictorial or graphic images and then communicate that information that those images convey. Those who are more visually literate have an increased ability to see more of their visual field and take in more detailed and contextual information. They can also perceive more individual details. They can understand how those details relate to each other. And they're also better able to 
synthesize those understandings into a broader comprehension of a visual field. So to kind of uh, take a closer look at visual literacy, what, something that uh, COVE does in its workshops is that uh, they ask participants to break down an object, or in this case, um, we're looking at a painting, into different elements of visual literacy. And uh, they have identified five elements of visual literacy, uh, line, shape, color, texture, and space. And so in this painting uh, that we're using as an example, um, you know, this is what the, the painting looks like in its entirety um, and without having breaking it, breaking it down into the, different, into the different elements. But if we were to say, look at um, the lines that we, um, in, in this painting, what do we see here? And if we're just focusing on line, we see mostly horizontal, vertical, and angled lines. Um, from this painting. Um, however, in other contexts, you might consider looking for curved lines or wavy lines. The next element of visual literacy is shape. And here we see uh, mainly triangles, but in other contexts we could ask if we see circles, squares, rectangles, etc. The third element of visual literacy is color. Um, and here in this context, we see mainly the blue of the sky and the green of the trees. In other contexts, we, we may want to ask ourselves to focus attention on, say, warm colors, uh, reds, oranges, or yellows, cool colors, uh, which include blues, greens, and violets or uh, neutral colors like whites, beiges, and grays. Another element of visual literacy is texture. And in this painting, we see the texture of, say, the tree foliage, um, the smoothness of the carved marble, for instance, perhaps even uh, the silkiness of the drapery that we see in the uh, foreground on the right-hand side. However, in other contexts, we, we could ask ourselves if we perceive other types of textures. Um, for instance, hard, soft, rough, etc. The last uh, element of visual literacy is space. And here we notice the broad sky and also the spaces in between the building columns. In other contexts, we could look at the amount of or perhaps the lack of space between objects, the amount of area an object takes up, or we could look to openings that may lead to other spaces or other areas. So now that I've just presented these elements of visual literacy, I would like to get a little bit of audience participation. So um, you all should have a, a chat box or text box where you can send a message um, to the host and to the group. And I'm going to show you on this next slide just a workplace scene. And before you, you, your minds start running wild with all the possible hazards that you might see in this photograph, um, I'm going to ask you to instead analyze this scene using those elements of visual literacy that we just ran through. And um, in the text box, you can, you can write uh, to me and, and tell me uh, what you see, what, kind, what potential hazards you see, um, and which element of visual literacy or which elements of visual literacy uh, kind of led you to see that potential hazard. So um, you know, I could ask you to look at, say, horizontal lines. 
vertical lines. Um, perhaps there's some curvy or wavy lines that you can look at. Uh, shapes, angles, warm colors, um, uh, cool colors. What do you see here? So I'm getting some answers in. And uh, one person writes that using uh, yellow as a color, a yellow line, so that's actually kind of two elements in one. And you can see that there's this cord that comes across uh, the walkway here, which could create a trip hazard. Um, another uh, example here, lines. Uh, the lines led me to see the table that's in the walkway. And also, there's the wavy line that's across the pathway. Yes, that would be the cord there. Um, uh, the floor markings, once again, probably using that um, element of line and also color, um, supposedly marking boundaries of free space. But you can see that things are intruding upon that free space. That's great. Um, uh, someone noticed the uh, fire extinguisher uh, that's in the that's against the wall here, uh, using the element of color. That's great. Um, also, let's see, um, using uh, color, uh, someone noticed that the sparks here that are that are uh, being produced from the grinder as a potential hazard. Great. Um, other things here. Um, an ergonomic hazard with the grinding using the oh, using the element of shape. Yes, you can see like um, the angle that this uh, worker's arm is making um, using that as the element of shape, and notice that it could possibly lead, be an ergonomic hazard with that angle. This is this is great stuff, everyone. Um, uh, looking at, let's see, I'm, I'm getting some more in here. Uh, texture, texture of the overflowing trash bin that is damaged at the bottom. Yes, yes, kind of using, um, noticing the <laughs> very large dents that's in this trash can. Um, uh, I think someone else also mentioned, yes, the textures of the drum here. Um, Overhead platform with horizontal lifeline. Yes, I see here. Someone is pointing out uh, the horizontal lines created by the platform. Um, what else do we have here? Um, this is great stuff. I just want to be able to, to get everybody's comments here. Um, someone noticed using the element of uh, space, the, the windows, and the light here um, along the walls. Um, using elements of color, someone noticed uh, uh, yellow lifting devices. Um, the, uh, the people with, their, with the colors of the uniforms and also the colors of the equipment. Um, and someone else mentioned that the sh uh, using the element of shape uh, led this person to look to the box on top of the metal cabinet. Yes, you can kind of see that here. Um, this is another interesting one too. The, the table has the floor mat pushed up here. That could also be a potential uh, trip hazard there. Great, great. Um, this is really, really great stuff, and I'm so glad that you guys um, have given me so much audience participation. So this is wonderful. Um, I'm going to have to take some of these back um, to um, <laughs> to other presentations and see if um, we can um, identify some more. So this is this is wonderful, wonderful, great job. All right, so let's move on with our presentation. So how can visual literacy help? Uh, hopefully we've just kind of demonstrated uh, that a, a bit with, uh, with the exercise that we just went through. Um, 
you know, that using visual literacy um, can slow down your mind a little bit, you know, if you're taking things element by element, um, instead of just trying to take in an entire work scene all at once, uh, you're actually slowing down your mind to focus in on specific details, details that you might have missed uh, by not taking more time um, and by just trying to take in an entire scene all at once. Um, so that is the main premise um, that we're using to uh, talk about the utility of visual literacy for workplace safety. That being said, visual literacy can help in other ways as well. So having a heightened ability to perceive hazards can enable us and enable workers to be proactive about our work environments and also take measures to mitigate hazards before they can cause an incident. Uh, so in other words, visual literacy can turn potential incidents into near misses. Being better at visual language can also produce more detailed and descriptive incident reports. Having better visual language can help gather better evidence from the scene or from witnesses uh, when doing investigations. Being more visually literate can help safety managers verify and audit the effectiveness of corrective actions, such as are those corrective actions making an impact? Are they making the desired impact? And additionally, visual literacy training serves as ongoing safety training and learning for workers at every level of the organization. So visual literacy skills, like any other learned skill, uh, need to be periodically honed and retrained. How does visual literacy work? Um, so what we are doing um, in our pilot study with uh, Camel Institute organizations is we're providing a set of tools and approaches um, it, within visual literacy, and we're hoping to integrate them into uh, an existing EHS management system. So some of the things that, um, uh, some of the activities that are included in the workshops uh, through COVE and the Toledo Museum of Art are things like drawing and description exercises. Um, so th these exercises are meant to um, improve the way a person describes um, an object. Um, uh, so in a back-to-back -back drawing, for instance, you have two people sitting back-to-back. -back. One person is the drawer, and the other person is the describer. The describer is looking at an object and describing it to a person, to the person sitting behind them. And the drawer has to describe, or has to, has to draw what the describer is, is relating. And this is, uh, this is designed to, to help people uh, develop better uh, communicative skills and comprehension. Um, it's like I said in the previous slide, um, being better at using visual language helps us um, to provide better descriptions and to communicate better with each other. So that is the purpose of that exercise. Other uh, examples of how visual literacy can work um, in a workplace safety context is uh, in the revision of procedures and documents such as JSAs. Um, these uh, JSAs might um, contain better language, description of procedures. Um, and other times, though, we've actually had some of our Campbell members um, develop JSAs with uh, pictures and photographs um, to, to help with that process. So the overall, uh, the overall uh, goal of these exercises is to reduce visual biases, increase recognition, and also language convergence. So um, to talk about a little bit, though, about visual biases, we have some slides here that can explain a little bit of that. When we talk about overcoming our visual biases, we have to first understand uh, what our natural uh, uh, visual biases are. So the, 
here are three of them that Cove and the Toledo Museum of Art have identified. Uh, sometimes you can't see something um, that's in front of you even if you know it's there. Once you see something, you can't unsee it, and you're always filling in the blanks based on what you expect to be there. So some examples of this. Um, and some of you who have attended uh, the NSC Congress and Expo, if you, if you attended the Congress and Expo in Houston last fall, uh, you've probably seen this photograph. And we ask you, can you see it? And just by the nature of that question, you can probably guess that there's something there to see. Um, but uh, can you see it? And um, does anyone have a guess as to what is there? Um, I do have a, some guesses here that are coming in to the, ch uh, uh, to the chat box. Um, uh, someone says a cheetah. Someone says a leopard. Um, and see, I'm thinking that a lot of you have already seen this photograph. <laughs> so that's why you're, uh, you're asking that way. Um, well, here it is. Here is the, the colorized version of the photograph. And yes, now you can see it. And you're right. This is a, a very large feline. Um, also, part of our visual bias is that once you see something, you can't unsee it. And so even if I go back to the black and white version of the photograph, um, you can still see the cheetah, um, even though um, you probably you might not have been able to see it previously. All right. So another example of our visual bias uh, is here. Now these uh, chess sets are actually the same color. It doesn't necessarily look like it here. The, the top uh, chest set looks to be lighter in color. The bottom set looks to be darker in color, but they are actually the same color. The reason why we can't see that they are the same color um, from this photograph is because of the two different backgrounds. However, let's see what happens when we make the backgrounds behind each of the chest sets uh, the same. Now we can clearly see that both sets of chess pieces are the same color. So our ability to see things depends greatly on other things that are occurring visually in the environment or in the background. Other examples of our visual bias. So this is the final example of visual bias. And this is that our minds are constantly filling in the blanks depending on what we expect to see. So take this image. Can you read this? Um, yes, I'm assuming you can read that phrase because all the letters are there. However, if I change it, it's still possible to read that question even with some letters missing because this is what our minds do. We fill in the blanks and what we expect to be there. I'm assuming that you all can also read this phrase, even though you haven't seen the full phrase previously. And the same with this one. So what these slides and the ones previous to it have hopefully explained is that uh, we do have these natural visual biases. And hopefully we've also, uh, they've also demonstrated that our visual literacy skills are improved when we move beyond these biases. So sometimes it's difficult to see safety or the presence of safety because it's considered the status quo. We are used to seeing safe conditions, and we perceive them as normal. Um, so you know, in, in a work situation, it's possible that we can be uh, blinded by the noise or the safe conditions. And this prevents us from accurately perceiving the signals or unsafe conditions. And we may gloss over those unsafe conditions and fill in 
with what we are used to seeing. So going through the visual literacy exercises, workshops, and trainings, um, we're training ourselves to, to slow down, uh, to see the signals through the noise, um, and to not be blinded by what we expect to be there, by the status quo. So the, the project itself has um, involved, at this point, um, three different uh, Campbell Institute members. And you can see their logos on the side there. And the way that we're uh, currently evaluating um, for visual literacy's effect on, uh, we're doing this specifically to look at hazard recognition skills. And we generally have uh, two ways to evaluate this. At the moment, we're looking at both quantitative and qualitative metrics. So the most obvious quantitative metric that we are looking at for this study is the number of proactive hazard recognition or near-miss reports that are filed. Uh, we expect that as um, hazard recognition skills are are heightened or enhanced through the visual literacy uh, training that you would find more employees uh, filing these proactive hazard recognition or near miss reports. Another quantitative metric is the number of stop work orders filed. And this has the same logic behind it, that the more sensitive we become to potential hazards, um, the more justified uh, workers will feel um, in issuing a stop work order. Uh, some qualitative metrics generally revolve around the quality of a JSA report. So for instance, how completely is a JSA filled out? Has the JSA report been completed by the entire work team? The quality of hazard recognition reports can also be evaluated through the consistency of the language that's being used in the reports. Uh, so for instance, do people describe hazards in the same way and in a manner that is understandable to others? This is what that, those back-to-back -back drawings, um, that back-to-back that -back drawing activity is supposed to foster. It's supposed to foster this uh, better communication consistency of language. And having this uh, consistency of language, being uh, writing things in a way that are understandable and comprehensible to others is really essential to ensuring that hazards are addressed proactively. So I did promise that you would see some of the results of, uh, from, one of our, from one of our pilot sites. And I'm going to be taking you through uh, some of these. Now, um, these, um, these uh, slides, next slides that we're going to go through actually come from a Cummins manufacturing site. Um, Cummins is one of our um, uh, charter members of the Campbell Institute. And uh, if you are not familiar with Cummins, they are in the business of uh, manufacturing and distributing uh, diesel engines. And so one of, the, uh, one of our pilot sites is, uh, is a manufacturing site. And it, previous to joining the Visual Literacy Project, they had already tracked many things about um, the hazard reports that were submitted. Um, uh, but since uh, implementing the visual literacy training, they've begun flagging and also categorizing the hazards uh, that are recognized uh, throughout the plant. So as of, um, as of March uh, 2017, which is when we uh, collected some of these uh, data, um, 225 employees had been trained throughout the plant. They identified 132 issues using the elements of visual literacy and then submitted and also corrected 25 hazards 
through the company's Find It, Fix It uh, program. And Find It, Fix It is their uh, hazard recognition and correction initiative. So you can see in uh, Figure 1, uh, the majority of the hazards identified so far by the Cummins manufacturing site are through the visual literacy elements of line and color. And this is followed by the elements of texture, space, shape, and then a combination of elements, which they have labeled as variety. Another set of results here, and one that I also find very interesting, is that in addition to tracking the number and also the types of hazards that have been identified by employees, the safety team at this Cummins manufacturing site has also compared the fundamental risk scores that employees have assigned to types of hazards before any types of controls are put in place. So risk is assessed using the factors of severity, exposure, and probability. And you can see here in these different tables that it appears that the visual literacy training has heightened workers' risk perception um, and also lowered their risk tolerance. So that results in higher scores for exposure, severity, and overall fundamental risk for certain hazards. Let me get my pointer tool out here, and you can see uh, for, this, for this one, for slips, trips, and falls on the same level, uh, the first column here were the exposure score, severity score, and fundamental risk score pre-visual literacy training. Um, and then you can see in the next column over what those scores look like post-visual literacy training. And you can see they actually went up quite significantly. Um, you also see changes in the hazard here fall from height. Um, all of these, all the numbers on the on the right hand side are are larger than those on the left. And the same thing goes for machine hazards. Um, so, pre-visual literacy training. These were the exposure, severity, and fundamental risk scores. And then post-visual literacy training. You can see how those all of those scores increased. All right, and here are actually some um, photograph examples that we've taken from our white paper publication. Uh, so another thing uh, that the Cummins Manufacturing site has done is documented uh, through photos some of the hazards that have been identified using the elements of visual literacy, and then how those hazards were fixed. Um, so in this first exhibit here, we're looking at before and after pictures of steps and a handrail. And using the elements of line, shape, and texture, employees noticed that the rise and run of these steps were not consistent and also not to code. Also, they n noticed using texture that the treads of the steps were run down. And there also was not a railing on one side of these steps. So to fix the hazard, uh, you can see this is the after photo. The steps were replaced to have, to have the proper rise and run. There was new treading that was put on that was not uh, worn down. And they also added a handrail on the other side. And in Exhibit 4 that we have here, um, this one is um, a fail-safe for stopping an engine. And using the element of shape, workers had noticed that um, it, um, this photograph isn't quite as good, but there was, it, it was very sharp edge um, that was on the fail-safe. Um, and so they ground it down. They ground down that edge. Um, after recognizing that hazard. So some of the other things um, that uh, they noticed, uh, we, we don't have necessarily pictures of, um, but they've also used um, elements of visual literacy to see when uh, certain objects are not necessary. 
and can be removed uh, for better housekeeping and efficiency. So that is um, another way that visual literacy has, um, has helped uh, out this facility. All right. Um, so that takes us through the, um, uh, the results that we have so far um, from the Visual Literacy Project. You know, what we're going to uh, continue to do is collect uh, data and reports from our pilot sites. Um, we're also continuing to work with Cove in um, conducting more workshops and doing more evaluations of those training workshops. I should also mention that if you are interested in the trainings that are offered through Cove, you can visit them at their website, which is covectr.com. That's covecenter.com. And uh, you can find out more information about the trainings and workshops that they offer. Uh, they will also be offering their first um, free webinar in a couple days' time. Um, so if you're interested in uh, hearing more directly from Cove, you can go to their website, covectr.com, and register for their webinar that is occurring uh, this Thursday, March 21st, at 1 p.m. Central. It's called A New Approach. Um, to engage employees and mitigate risks. And it's going to be presented by uh, Doug Ponsler, who is the Chairman and Managing Director at Cove and also friend of the Campbell Institute. Um, so um, that is, um, uh, yes, please check out you know, the, the offerings through our, our, our partner uh, at Cove Center. And um, if you have other questions um, for me, I, I'm happy to take some questions at this time. My information is also on this slide. And if you're interested in downloading the reports, um, we have two white papers currently on visual literacy. You can find both of them at thecamelinstitute.org slash research. You'll also be able to find uh, a lot of um, different resources for uh, research in other areas of safety. Um, so we have a lot on leading indicators, contractor safety management, um, health and well-being, sustainability, uh, whatever your interest is. Um, I'm sure you can, you can find something that will satisfy it. Um, and um, yes, at this time I will I'll be happy to take some questions. I, I know that one question that will pop up is, uh, uh, will the slide deck be available? And uh, the, um, the recording of the webinar will be available after today's presentation, after we wrap. Um, and so if you registered for the webinar, then you will receive a thank you email follow-up. And it will also contain in that email a link to the recording. You will also be able to find the recordings for all of the webinars that we've done, not only on this subject but others, um, over at the Campbell Institute website, thecampbellinstitute.org slash webinars. So, um, all right, so we do have some questions. I, I do have one uh, first that I would like to address that came in um, kind of during the middle of the webinar presentation. The question is, um, are there examples of the JSAs that have been created using the idea of visual literacy? Um, you know, I, yes, there are examples of this. Uh, we would have to see if, the, uh, if our participants um, in the project would like to make those available. But, um, but yes, we do have examples of the JSAs that have been created. Um, something that um, USG, one of the participants in the study, um, had done, even kind of predating their participation in the visual literacy pilot, 
uh, was that they were taking a look at their at their JSAs and actually incorporating uh, photographs and visual elements into it. So I think that was also pretty interesting um, that they were doing that even before um, they got involved with visual literacy. But of course, um, after having gone through the training, uh, you can imagine that um, those JSAs have been improved um, even more. Um, so thank you for uh, that question. Um, are there other questions that, that people have that I can address here? Um, yes, we will share. If you do want to see the copy of the, of the presentation, um, you can feel free to send me um, an email and I can send you a PDF of, of the presentation slides if, if you are um, interested in, in that um, and not just the recording of the webinar. All right. Um, well, um, Diana, at this time, I don't see any other, um, oh wait, here are some questions that are coming in. Um, is there an online class for employees? You know, that's an interesting question. I, I don't believe that at this time uh, Cove offers online training or for their workshops. Um, they do hold a, a their workshops in, in the Toledo, in the Toledo area. Um, I know that they also will bring training to your workplace as well, but I'm not sure about the online offerings. Um, that is something that you can um, that you can ask, um, inquire more through their website. Um, all right, and not seeing any other other questions, um, Diana. I think that we are we're good to uh, wrap up here. Thank you, Joy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for this webinar. We appreciate your attention and participation in today's event. You may now disconnect.